Respected, respected leaders, respected elders, brothers and sisters, fellow young people. Today we come before you with a message, a message of hope, a message of prosperity, a message of inclusion, a message that will ensure all our Guyanese families, all communities, and all villages develop, prosper, and grow under a People's Progressive Party civic government. We are not here, we are not here with messages of division. That is not what the PPP civic is about. The PPP has always been a party that brings Guyanese together and that work in the interest of every Guyanese. And that is what we will do after March the 2nd. When I was elected as presidential candidate, our general secretary and our leader asked me to visit every single community. And I've been here to many of the communities because he wanted us as leaders to understand directly from you what the problems are. And coming to these communities, I've appreciated the difficulties you have. I have a better understanding of your specific needs. And it is with that understanding that we together in the People's Progressive Party and with the inclusion of the views of yourselves from those community meetings have drafted a manifesto that reflects the needs, the will, and the aspiration of you, the people. So today, the manifesto is about you, your concerns, your desires, your ambition, and what you believe are the things necessary to take your communities to the next level. My brothers and sisters, the APNU AFC seems to have another problem before March 2nd. According to them boys, they are in a hot debate now on whether they will have to change the color red from Valentine's on February the 14th. No way! No way! So my brothers and sisters, you know, first of all, I want to get this over very straight. You know our leaders. You know our General Secretary. You know that you can trust our leaders. You have trusted our General Secretary with the leadership of this country. You have trusted him with the leadership of this party. And he is part of this team that you will trust with the leadership of the country after March 2nd to bring back, to bring back the development of our communities. Let us not gamble with trust. Let us not gamble with trust. I said in one community that the first thing we have to do if we believe we can bring development to people is to respect people. And any leader who cannot respect you do not deserve your respect. And Granger allowed his minister to disrespect you with one of the most priceless things to you. That is your land. And you must not respect them for the way they disrespected you. And on March the 2nd, you will show them that you are not going to respect them a day beyond that by electing the People's Progressive Party civic to government. And what are we voting for? What are we voting for? Yes, the PPP. But we are voting to ensure 
We return the one laptop per family program until every single family benefit from that program. We are voting for the return of the solar panel program until every community, every village, every house, every family benefit from that. You are voting for the return of the scholarships. You are voting for the return of the scholarships. You remember over a thousand Guyanese became doctor under the Jack Dave initiative. Medical doctors, thousands of Amerindians got their first chance to secondary education. Hundreds got their first chance to university education. But we have to do better. We have to ensure that all, all our brothers and sisters in every community have access to secondary and university education. That is why, that is why in the next five years, we will deliver 20,000 new scholarships in every part, every community of our country, so that your sons and daughter, your sons and daughter will fulfill their dream of becoming doctors, engineers, pilots, teachers, whatever the field are, this government, your government must support them in the realization of their dreams and their ambition. And that is what you're voting for on March the 2nd. My brothers and sisters, yes, the PPP did well to have universal primary education. But that was not the end of the PPP plan. The PPP plan was to ensure all our children have sec access to secondary education. That is why we are going to train the people, young people who are qualified from right within your village to become trained teachers in the secondary department. We are going to expand on hostels. We are going to build new schools. And we are going to create the infrastructure, whether it requires transportation, to ensure that every single child in every single community have access to secondary education. That is what you'll be voting for. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we started a program to give you access to water, but the program is incomplete. When we came into government, I remember one of my first tasks by then President Jack Dale was to come up with a color code as to the level of water service in every village. And in the hinterland, we had less than 20% coverage. By the time we left government, we had 87% coverage. Not to every home, but at least to the community. Now we have to ensure we realize 100% coverage of good water supply to every hinterland community. My brothers and sisters, you heard about the health, health care. We have committed in the manifesto that we are going to build one state-of-the-art medical facility in every single region. But we must also be able to connect your medical huts and clinics with that facility. That is why we must also invest in a transportation system that would allow every single village to be connected with a state-of-the-art facility in this region. And that facility will have all the modern equipment that is necessary to ensure a good healthcare system that delivers to you in this region. We started the school feeding program. We must now expand that program 
and we must link that program to the agricultural sector so that we can use as far as possible the produce from the farmers to supply the school feeding program, to supply the hostels, to supply the hospitals, so that we can create demand and ensure there is market and fair price for the farmers all the time. You would have heard that we are going to reinstate it because we care grant. We are not only going to reinstate it, we are going to make it 50,000 per child. But more importantly, when I visited the communities, the leaders tell me that 90% of the children don't have access to the transportation that they said they provided. It has been administered through discrimination, victimization, and corruption. When we give the Because We Care grant, whether you're APNUASC, whether you're PPP, the only criteria is that you're a son and daughter of the soil, and every guy needs will benefit evenly from that program. And we realize too that we need to support the communities more. That is why we are committed to the increase of the presidential grant. But more importantly, we are going to work with the communities to develop a community development plan. And we are going to set aside the resources to finance and implement that plan so that you can have your desires, your priorities, and your wishes fulfilled. We too appreciate the fact that our 2,000 councillors today have greater responsibility and sometimes their jobs are full time. That is why we have committed in the manifesto to increasing the stipend for 2,000 councillors so they can better serve the communities. Not only are we going to return the CSO program and put back 2,000 young Amerindians to work, but we are going to expand the program through investment in enterprise development, developing the skills of young people and linking that skills with opportunity in the economy. Ensuring that we train our young people to participate meaningful in the economy so when they work they get an income and that income can come back to the communities and the villages to help the economy in the villages we have to support the village economy and one of the most important support is that to agriculture when i visited the communities some of the main issues were the input costs no support from the government no agrochemical, accoutrement bait, transportation services. We started a program on the President Jack Deo to give every single community a tractor with the implements to help farming and agriculture. We have to return to that until we equip every single community to expand food production and expand agriculture. Then we have to help you by linking you in a better way to the market to ensure that not only you have market for your produce, but you have fair prices. When I was here a month ago, farmers had bags upon bags of ginger. And they were almost in tears when they told me, they have to leave it to rot because the price they were offered cannot even buy back the fuel to take it back. Four years ago, they were paying $500 a gallon for the fuel to bring out their produce. Today, it is $1,500 per gallon. 
This is the reality. No matter how much propaganda they bring, it can't change this. You live it every day. You feel the heart. You understand the heart. And on March the 2nd, we will fix this. We have to fix this. And we must fix this. In the manifesto, we spoke about exploring a grant facility to help farmers to improve production, to increase their farm, and support those in the private sector who want to partner with the local farms in going into mega farming production. These are the things that will bring real change, that will transform the economy, and that will make farming profitable and viable for our farmers. My brothers and sisters, we have to ensure that we invest in the ICT sector, not because we want to give you access to internet. Since 2017, every community by now was supposed to be connected on the Wi-Fi system with the money the PPP Civic left there for them to do it. They abandoned the program and they sought to take the money away from the hinterland region to the coast. But when the election came upon them, they quickly tried to step back in. But the aim of this program was much, much more than giving you access to Wi-Fi. As one two shout told me, what is the use of Wi-Fi if we can't afford the phone to be connected to the Wi-Fi? What is the use of the Wi-Fi only if 20 persons in the village can connect to it? So we are going to invest in an ICT platform that is going to give you expanded internet, reliable internet, efficient internet, at free of cost. And we're going to link that to the education system. So we're going to deliver distance and online university education to you right here in the region. We're going to support you in owning your own cell phones by the removal of taxes. So if a cell phone, in every cell phone purchase, you will be able to save thousands of dollars. This is how we will bring the real benefit to you. And these are the things we speak of in our manifesto. My brothers and sisters, we have to be able to support the transportation needs of the hinterland. That is why we have set aside $2 billion at a minimum to be invested in hinterland roads every single year for the next five years. That is at least $10 billion that will be invested in hinterland roads in the next five years. But more importantly, we are going to train you in the villages to benefit from the jobs of maintaining and building these roads. So you will have the first opportunity at these contracts. The communities must have the first opportunity at benefiting from these contracts so that the money can remain in the village. We are going to support agro-processing we are going to support our fisher folk by giving them access to equipment, the removal of taxes, but much more important is to ensure the safety of our fisher folk when they go out there for the daily bread. We have to invest in a system that will guarantee their safety. The system that will ensure that their families don't have to worry when they go out there for the daily bread. And this is what the PPPC will be doing. Creating the infrastructure not only for the generation of jobs and the creation of wealth, but keeping us safe at every level. The honey industry in the LCDS, 
the honey industry, and many other alternative livelihood options were identified for development. Under the LCDS, monies were directly earmarked for your communities to bring benefit, to create jobs, and to give you alternative livelihood option. Many young people today would have had new opportunity by training in the International Institute of Biodiversity, training in environmental science, training in a hospitality management institute. We were denied that when they stopped the implementation of the LCDS. After March the 2nd, we are going to bring back the LCDS because the LCDS create job, bring back opportunity, put money in your pocket, put money in your, in your villages, and improve the life of our people. That is a development strategy. A development strategy is not about painting places in green. A development strategy is about putting money in your pockets, about ensuring you never go to bed hungry, about supporting your children, and ensuring young people realize their dreams. And that is the development strategy of the People's Progressive Party City. My brothers and sisters, we must also support our pensioners. And in supporting our pensioners, not only do we have to increase their pension, because we have already said we'll double the pension to $40,000 per month. But you know, when you go to the villages, the pensioners would say to us, it is so difficult to get the pension. We have to wait hours. We have to travel miles. We are going to fix this. We are going to fix this by ensuring the pensioners are paid directly in the communities they are from. <laughs> hostels, not only the hostels here, but the hostel in Georgetown. Many of you complain to me about the level of service, the indignity that you go through to stay at these hostels. We have to fix this so that you can have more better accommodation when you go to Georgetown or when you come out here. So that your children have better accommodation. We have to expand them and equip them to take care of the needs of the people. And that is what our manifesto speaks to. And we have to deal with the migrant situation. We have to be able to support you to deal with the migrant situation in many communities with your little resources you have to take on this huge problem the government will be helping you directly in the communities that are affected to support and help in this migrant situation that we have we are going to expand the hinterland housing program we started it you know what we delivered in Whitewater. We are not going to stop until every single community can benefit from the hinterland housing program. We have to build the village capacity. We have to ensure that the villages are more integrated in the development agenda of our country. That is why we're going to help villages to become economically viable by supporting community forestry organization, giving you the equipment, giving you the resources, and giving you the training so that you can generate your own wealth in the forestry sector. We're going to support community miners. We're not going to support you like this government by handcuffing the Amerindian miners are taking them to Georgetown bareback. We are going to support you by investing in community mining 
of our organization, equipping you, training you, and ensuring that you benefit from the mineral resources too. You heard about the border in the manifesto. We speak about the development of a border patrol agency, an agency that can train and equip people from right within this region and community to work in that agency so that jobs will be created and you will be more integrally involved in the protection of the borders of this region. Those are the changes. Those are the things on the transformative agenda that will create wealth. Many of you here have a relative or a friend who would have lost their job in the mining or forestry sector. And you know how that has impacted your family and your village. So we are going to help the miners and the forestry operators to go back to work. We are going to help small miners, medium-sized miners. We're going to remove the burdensome taxes. We're going to provide more training. And we are going to have a transparent way of allocating land. We're going to develop a fair system in which all must have access and equal opportunity. So as we move forward, we must also ensure we protect the rights of workers. So when your people, when the villagers go to work with the forestry operators or the miners, they are treated well. They are paid well. These are things that matter to you. So my brothers and sisters, I know you have been long. You have been here very long. You have withstood the sun. But you know what? Looking at your commitment here on every single face gives us the motivation. Reignite a new commitment in us. The GS was telling me, former President Jack Dale, he don't like to see people suffer at all. And he was telling me, look at the discipline and commitment here. We have a responsibility because of this discipline and commitment to be a disciplined and committed government to your cause. We have to return the favor to ensure we govern every day in your interest, to ensure we represent you, and to ensure we manage in a way that gives you more. And this is our commitment to you. So, on March the 2nd, it is not only the PPP that will be winners. All of us, all Guyana, will be winners and must be winners. This is the message of the PPP. So as we leave today, let us leave with hope. Let us leave with an understanding that better is coming. Let us leave with an understanding that we care. We love you. And God bless you. Thank you very much.